I'm Amr Shahada from Best Stewards. I'm always honored to host uh, Steve and Janet Gray's groups. This is a two bus load, as you can see, and we are quite busy with this man. He keeps keep, keeping us busy all the time. We want you to come with him because he knows how to do business here. He knows how to make things happen for the people. So I hope to see more of your pilgrims here, Steve. Thank you, Amr. You're welcome. Amr's the best guide, best tours. We love working with him. Thank you. Now we're visiting the place where Jesus multiplied the loaves and fish. It was a real miracle, and we get off the bus and go into the church to commemorate this miracle of Jesus. Not only because he, they knew he's the son of God, you know, they, people followed for their physical needs, let's admit that. But what is important is that we keep in mind not only 5,000, but a bigger number than just 5,000. This place... They're underneath part of the atrium here, and Amr is explaining the history of this church and its meaning. And I'll take you in and show you what they're all going to see in just a moment inside the church. This is a beautiful yet very simple church commemorating the multiplication of loaves and fish. And right up under this altar is the rock where Jesus performed the miracle. There's a manger seemed on top of the rock that marks the place of the miracle. I'll show you this mosaic in a separate picture. Hi mom, we're safe, it's beautiful here, the weather's great, the food's wonderful, and we're having a great time. Here we're starting Mass. This is over the house of Peter in Capernaum. This is the place where Jesus lived for three years with Peter and Andrew. And right outside here, the readings of the Mass are John chapter 6, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And Jesus said those words right there in that synagogue. institutes the Eucharist. This is where the priesthood is instituted, the Eucharist is instituted, 
and at that point he goes up into the, for the upper uh, Passover meal. But when you read that story, there's a problem with that story. You're supposed to have a priest at the Passover meal and a lamb, and there's nothing about a priest going in there with them, and there's nothing about a lamb. So we got a problem. Oh, wait a minute, there is a priest. Who's the priest? Jesus is the priest in the upper room. And there's a lamb. Who's the lamb? Jesus is our Passover lamb. And when he says, you must, this is my body, you must eat my body, where, what, what's that all about? If you go back to Exodus where the Passover meal was, when you killed the Passover lamb, you had to put the blood on the lentil and doorposts of the, door, of the house, just like in the book of Exodus. And you had to eat the meat of the lamb. When the lamb was killed, you had to roast it, and you had to eat that meat before you could leave and go. And Jesus is the Passover lamb. And he's saying to them, you cannot get up from this meal and leave until you eat the meat of the lamb. This is my, I am the lamb. This is my body. Eat this. Isn't that cool? Did you know that's why he says that? Because he's the lamb. He's giving them the meat of the lamb to eat. This is my body. It had rained earlier, so everybody was standing to listen to my talk here. But the kids all climbed up in the tree like squirrels. They were up in the tree having fun listening to the talk. Made it a lot more fun for the kids. And I'll tell you, these are great kids. They've been a delight to have along the way. But I think it's also important for them to learn about the Eucharist and learn it in a, from an interesting and biblical perspective. So we had a good time there at Capernaum. off the restaurant, off the buses here at the restaurant. We're going to the Tangerine right here under the mountain, Mount Arbel. And we're going in for a nice fish lunch, St. Peter's fish. And these tables are all set up for our booth. We're all set and ready to go. you guys get? Oh, yummy. Oh, we got the St. Peter's fish. Oh, unbelievable. Looking good. I am so excited. Okay, you excited? Unbelievable. Good. Are you excited? Yep, I'm excited. Good. I'm gonna wait till you guys get started. You know what to do with it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> delicious. It is good, isn't oh, it? Oh, delicious. You chicken out and got chicken. Chicken is superb. <laughs> Thank you. Janet and I and our four kids went forward at Christ the King Catholic Church in Ann Arbor and with tears in all of our eyes we were received into the church Halfway to Jerusalem, we stop at this rest area and everybody has the time to get ice cream and coffee or whatever they want to do. But uh, it was also a good time for us to talk, stretch our legs and so on. And then we get back on the bus and we head all the way down to Ein Karim to Jerusalem. An hour later, we arrived at Ein Kerem. This is the Church of the Visitation up in the hill country of Judea, where Mary walked 100 miles to visit her relative Elizabeth. We climbed up the hill too and arrived at the church, and there we saw the beautiful place, and I gave my talk on Mary. Up the hill to the Church of Visitation. See you all Hi, we love you, Brenna, Ryan, Aaron, Simon, Leah, and Bridget. Be good for Grandma and Judy. We sure do miss you. Love you. Are you safe over here? Absolutely. Alex and my family, my mom, dad, Jimmy, Christina, Tommy, Tracy, and Max and Hudson. I love you very much and I'm praying for you. Everybody coming into the visitation where Mary met Elizabeth and this is Zachariah the high priest. Here's Mary arriving and Elizabeth greeting her and here is the slaughter of the innocents up here and John the Baptist was protected 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour we go up to the upper church with the beautiful artwork of Mary. Here she's the queen of heaven. We see the council that declared her the mother of God. We see the battle of Lepanto and Mary and Cana and mother of the, of the church and so many different beautiful artworks here that describe Mary and all the dogmas. Great place. Do you think those parallels are by chance? Those were, those were embedded there by the Holy Spirit. Luke is telling you who and what Mary is, but most people read that story and they never know because they don't know their Old Testament. They don't know the story of the Ark of the Covenant being three months up here and David saying, who am I, the, who am I that the Ark of the Lord should come to me? All of those parallels between David and the Ark being in, this, in the hill country and Mary coming into the hill country, the parallels are there by the Holy Spirit and it, this is why I say it's so fun to study the Bible. If you study the Bible and you dive into these things and you read and compare, look at how exciting it is. So he's telling Telling us that Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, I know Christmas was a few days ago, but for Catholics, it goes all the way until January 6th. We finally arrived here in Jerusalem. Welcome to Jerusalem, and we are at the beautiful Notre Dame Center. Look at this, owned by the Vatican. There's our lady up there, and there's the Vatican flag, and these are all the rooms our people are staying in. And we're gonna have dinner up there on the roof in a couple nights. Here we are, welcome to Jerusalem.